Have you ever had a conversation with a Muslim and he brings up chapter four, verse 82? Yeah, the one that says, do they not reflect on the Quran? Had it been from anyone other than Allah, they would have certainly founded it many inconsistencies, AKA contradictions, errors, whatever you wanna call it. Okay, well, today I'm here to show you one. Ask a Muslim, is Iblis an angel or a jinn? I guarantee you, they're gonna say he was a jinn. And I have an argument for the ones that say he was an angel because the Quran clearly denies him from ever being an angel. Okay, so now let's get into it first. We're gonna start with chapter seven, verse 11. Surely we created you, then shaped you, then said to the angels, prostrate before Adam. So they all did but not Iblis, who refused to prostrate with the others. The problem here is that it clearly states, we created you, then shaped you, then said to the angels. Iblis is not an angel, and I'm gonna show you why. Let's go to chapter seven, verse 12, literally the next verse. And it says here, Allah asked, what prevented you from prostrating when I commanded you? And Iblis replied and said, I am better than he is. You created me from fire and him from clay. The most important part is when Iblis tells him, you created me from fire and him from clay. He uses this as an excuse for why he's better than who? Adam. Okay, so now let's see who's created from fire in the Quran. We're gonna go to chapter 55, verse 14, down to 15. Let's start at 14. He created humankind from sounding clay like pottery and created jinn from smokeless flame of fire. And what does Iblis say? Allah asked, what prevented you from prostrating when I commanded you? He replied, I am better than he is. You created me from fire and him from clay. So that places Adam into the category of humans and it places Iblis into the category of what? Jinn. So now here's the issue. If we go to 1850, seems as if the author tried to clear it up a little bit, but also made a bigger mistake. Let's read 1850. And remember, when we said to the angels, no one else but the angels, okay? And remember, when we said to the angels, prostrate before Adam, so they all did, but not Iblis, who was of the jinn, but he rebelled against the command of his Lord. Wait a minute, what command? Can anybody show me in this verse or anywhere in the Quran where Iblis was commanded to do anything? We clearly see the command given to the angels. Let's go back to 712. What prevented you from prostrating when I commanded you? There it is again, but I can't seem to find the command. Let's take it back to 711. Then shaped you, then said to the angels, prostrate before Adam, though they all did, but not Iblis. Why is Allah in 712 asking him, what prevented you from prostrating when I commanded you? If he's not an angel, if he's a jinn and the command was for the angels, then there would be no reason for Allah to even ask Iblis, why didn't he obey the command? Because the command wasn't for him. And Muslims will say, well, well, then why did Iblis respond in the way that he responded? It clearly shows that he knew that the command was for him. No, wrong. If I told you there were 15 girls and one boy in the classroom and I said, all the girls go to the girls locker room. And then I turned to the guy and said, why didn't you go to the locker room when I commanded you? They would be looking at me like I'm crazy. And then if I said, the guy said, because I'm better than them, they would be looking at him like he's crazy because I wasn't talking to him. I was talking to the girls. Specifically, I specified the girls. So if anyone can hear someone say a sentence like that and not correct them on how it's supposed to go, they have a problem. And so this is a clear error. Now, this is for the people who accept the fact that Iblis is a jinn and not an angel. Here, I'm gonna debunk Iblis ever being an angel. 16, 
49 and it reads and to Allah prostrates whatever is in the heaven and whatever is in the earth of moving creatures and the angels and they are not arrogant now let's go to 1650 they fear their lord above them and do whatever they are commanded hmm so if they do whatever they are commanded how could they disobey here it gets even worse let's go to 66 6. oh believers protect yourselves and your families from a fire whose fuel is people and stones overseen by formidable and severe angels who never keyword never disobey whatever Allah orders always doing as commanded clear error here angels cannot disobey so there's no way that Iblis could be an angel Iblis is a jinn okay clear error and also I'm gonna pin an article and I'm gonna show you how even scholars of Islam have issues with this. This is an article titled The Nature of Iblis, where multiple people go back and forth about whether he's a jinn or an angel. So let's read. In the beginning, we have one titled Iblis as an angel. And this guy is going to quote Ibn Abbas. Number one, Tabari. The major argument reported by Tabari favoring the angelic nature of Iblis are three, even though they are presented in variegated hadith narrations. Tabari's major informant in this problem is Ibn Abbas, although in one instance he advances a narration which seems to expound contrary ideas to those he elsewhere retains. So in this article, Ibn Abbas is going to go back and forth and I'm going to prove that these guys have a issue with this very verse here. It's troubling and it clearly shows that the Quran has an error. It's erred. This is a contradiction. He cannot be an angel and a jinn at the same time because the Quran does not allow it. Subsection A. Iblis came from a tribe of angels called Jinn. And this is coming from Ibn Abbas. Iblis was from a tribe of angels called Jinn. They were created from the flaming fire from among the angels. His name was Al Harith. He was one of the treasurers of paradise. The angels not of this tribe were created from light. The Jinn that are recorded in the Quran were created from smokeless fire. In another hadith, the same Ibn Abbas says that Iblis was an angel of the earth coming from a tribe called Jinn and his name was then Azazil. We get understandings of what Ibn Abbas believes Iblis is, but it's not clear. We don't understand where he's getting these things from and none of this is actually in the Quran except for the fact that he was created from smokeless fire. Now let's go to where he starts to change his opinion. Now if we go down into the article, this is page 17, we'll see Iblis a jinn. We have seen that the major part of hadith narrations reported by Tabidi promote the supposition that Iblis is an angel transformed into a devil. In fact, under Quran verse 1850, only two very short hadith narrations are to be found in favor of his jinn nature. From Al Hassan, he says, Iblis was never an angel. He is indeed the origin of jinn, just as Adam is the origin of mankind. Also, from Shar B. Hafshab, Iblis was of the jinn whom the angels drove away, but some angels captured him and carried him to heaven. That statement is very, very odd because if the angels captured Iblis and carried him to heaven, Allah all knowing would know that he's not an angel. So he would he there's no reason for him to get mad at Iblis for not bowing down because the command was for the angels. Ibn Abbas, who up until now has defended Iblis's angelic essence. Up until now. Oh, okay. So now he's changing his position. Okay. And it says, provided Tabidi with a hadith narration which can be described as ambiguous. In it, Iblis is said to have been created amidst certain creatures, which it is not clear enough to divine angelic. It was these creatures who disobeyed God, not the angels. Okay, so the angels didn't disobey. Okay, I agree. The angels didn't disobey. And Iblis was not one of them. And the command was not to Iblis. Okay. 
And so in subsection A and B, we clearly see an understanding. It says from the book, we know that God created Iblis from fire, while it is not said that he created the angels in such a way. Boom. B. God himself said that Iblis is of the jinn. Very clear. Very clear. And it's, it's clear. God, Allah, said Iblis was a jinn. Never said he was an angel. And he gives you verses to show that he's not one. Because jinn were created from smokeless fire. Angels cannot disobey. So you can't show me why an angel by the name of Iblis disobeyed the command of Allah when he clearly shows you in 66.6 and chapter 16, verse 49 through 50, that angels do as they are commanded. Here, Ibn Abbas changes his position a little bit. And it says, God created some creatures and said, bow yourselves before Adam. They said, we shall not. So God sent upon them a fire which burnt them. Then he created some other creatures and said, I am the creator of a man from clay. Bow yourselves before Adam. But they refused. So God sent upon them a fire. It burnt them. Then he created these angels and said, bow yourselves before Adam. They said, yes. Now Iblis was among those who refused to prostrate themselves before Adam. Now let's break this down a little bit. So he's he's given us examples of God creating creatures who are not obeying him. Who are these creatures? Are these creatures the jinn? Are these creatures? Who are they? OK. Second of all, the problem with this statement is, is that in the Quran, in chapter seven, verse 12, Iblis uses the fact that he was already created from fire. He was always a jinn. He was already a jinn. And he uses that as a reason for why he disobeyed the command of Allah. Let's read. Allah asked, what prevented you from prostrating when I commanded you? He replied, I am better than he is. You created me from fire and him from clay. OK, so we're talking about how we were created. OK, our beginning. OK, so Ibn Abbas's uh, breakdown here doesn't really make sense. I don't know what he's trying to say, but at the end, it says they said yes. And then he says now Iblis was among the, those. Excuse me. And then he said, yes, now Iblis was among those who refused to prostrate themselves before Adam. OK, and what happened next? And what happened next? Allah asks him. Why did you not prostrate? But even here, it says, then he created these angels and said, bow down before Adam. He's talking to the angels. So even this explanation doesn't make sense in itself. And so Muslims, you know, they'll run you left and right to try to make you believe a lie when clearly there's a mistake here. So with that being said, here is a clear error in the Quran with evidence outside of the Quran using a Hadith and using the nature of Iblis, using Ibn Abbas. And I don't know what more you can ask for. This is a clear, clear, clear contradiction. Iblis cannot be an angel and a jinn at the same time. Allah doesn't allow it. The author of the Quran clearly made a mistake. See you guys later.